Hello everybody and welcome back. Good to talk to all of you again today. And today we are taking a look at the work in progress tier 9 German cruiser, the Siegfried. This is a member of the O-class battlecruiser concept that were never actually built. Now do keep in mind that this is a work in progress ship, which means that everything I talk about in this particular video can and potentially will change by the time this ship makes it onto the live servers. And of course there are already some announced changes. So in the port portion of this video, I will just talk about sort of the good, the bad, and the not so good things about the ship. And of course, we're going to start with the good. And the good thing is, of course, really, really accurate main guns. Take a look at this 20.6 kilometer range, 163 meter maximum dispersion. The guns behave well. She also has a Sigma value of 2.05, which is not listed in the port view, but that is the number. Ship is really good gun handling wise. However, 380 millimeter guns can be a little bit iffy, especially when you're dealing with tier nine, tier 10 ships, as you know, these are the same guns carried by the Bismarck interprets. However, you only got six of them. 380 millimeters means that ships like USN uh, heavy cruisers, ships like Alaska, you know, anything with 27 millimeter, you're basically not overmatching. And so you do kind of have to struggle a little bit there. Her HE performance, like many of the other German battleships, not really good, but HE penetration is actually not bad. The guns require you to be well positioned, and that's going to be kind of a thing with Siegfried. Positioning is really, really key, and she does really well when she's divisioned up, because when you're divisioned up, you can have another ship be your anchor, and then you can basically get on the flanks, and she performs marvelous, marvelously, bleh, can English say, in those kinds of conditions. So in terms of main gun performance and handling, really, really good. She's also got um, sort of last ditch torpedoes. Uh, currently they're eight kilometers, but of course the patch notes uh, for the changes already been announced. Torp range is gonna get nerfed by two kilometers down to six. Really not a big thing, to be honest. Uh, the torpedo change really doesn't matter much. Um, if you're using torpedoes on this thing, things have gone really south and you're pretty much gonna go and try to get as close as you can to guarantee torpedo hits because if you're, if you're using torpedoes on this ship, something's really gone wrong. She's got pretty strong AA defense right now. Um, again, not sure if they're going to change anything, but AA defense-wise, she's a really good ship, uh, well protected against aircraft. Uh, she's also able to choose between defensive fire or hydroacoustic. So all kind of good things so far about the ship. However, she does have issues, right? Oh, by the way, she's actually pretty fast too. Yeah, reasonably maneuverable. Uh, surface detect fully spec for everything 11.9 on uh, the surface, 8.7 by air. So most things are really good. In fact, when I was first playing the ship, I was like, you know what? I'll be honest, she's actually pretty well balanced on the first iteration. Like, she's not terrible, she's not amazing, she's just nicely balanced. She's ha she has her own thing, the really accurate guns, but there is a downside to the ship. And the downside has to do with the way her armor is. And everything at first look actually doesn't look too bad. If you take a look at this, you see upper belt armor, 90 millimeters, main belt, 190. You know, she's got pretty good main belt. Uh, if you take a look underneath it, you'll notice that she also has turtle back, right? She's actually got turtle back there, 80 millimeters. So, you know, looks like she's going to be well protected. And as long as you're able to get shots to bounce off the side here, or if you're really, really close and people are shooting at the turtle back, yeah, that is true. However, Siegfried, especially when you're trying to bow into things, has a tendency of eating very, very heavy and very random citadel damage. And the reason that happens is because of this. Take a look at this and you'll notice why. She's got a piece of citadel armor here and here. And take a look at the values. 100 millimeters there, 30 millimeters there. That is literally the worst out of any of the big super cruisers because once somebody's able to overmatch this bow, which is only 27, they go through there and they only have to go through 100 millimeters of armor, which is really not that much. Just to put into perspective, take a look at the Alaska. Alaska, by the way, <laughs> tiny little citadel there, right? But Alaska's got the 27 bow. Take it away and look at that. 260 for the citadel protection. Take a look at Stalingrad. Stalingrad is 140, but remember, Stalingrad also has that weird like pike nose and all that stuff, so not really reflective, but Stalingrad, you can't really sit it off in the front. Take a look at even a ship like Yoshino, 195. Azuma, 195. Like Siegfried here, really, really thin. So if you're trying to do this, you know, bow in action and a battleship knows what they're doing, especially battleships with 406 millimeters, 
they just shoot at your bow and if they get enough of distance bang citadel the way you actually have to play siegfried is actually a really sort of interesting way you actually try to angle a little bit less than bow in and so what you do is you try to get people to shoot at the side like you really try to give that side to get them to shoot there because you've got pretty decent armor there and as long as you know you can get some kind of auto bounce there shells will bounce 90 you know 190 good protection but that bow and that forward citadel plate and I'll, that by the way that's also present here at the back too see so if you're running away you can also eat those uh really big citadel hits siegfried protection wise needs some help strangely enough uh she doesn't have the ice breaking section or ice breaking bow where you see with a lot of the other german ships they've got an additional chunk there that's much thicker siegfried possibly is in need of that uh, especially considering they're taking away one of her heel charges so this is a ship that with the changes maybe they think they'll get her to be nicely balanced there but i really think that she needed maybe a little bit more protection even then you could take away more of the heel charges and i think she'd be okay but yeah she i think she needed that because that citadel armor in the back is just really iffy oops sorry about that I accidentally clicked on the captain anyways let's take a look at the ship in battle and i'll uh, sort of talk more about her playstyle so Siegfried's playstyle, if you really want to think about it, is the definition of what a battle cruiser playstyle should be. You're going after primarily cruisers, you know, you're going after the occasional battleship that's giving you a broadside, or you're going after ships that you can essentially overmatch if you happen to be top tier and you run into tier 7s. So really that's the first thing you want to think about, right? It's got 380mm guns, what ships can I effectively engage? This becomes a lot more challenging when you're dealing with, let's say, tier 9, tier 10 ships, that you'll see in actually quite frequently. And that sort of brings us to the key point of this ship's playstyle. You really need to get into the right positions. Right positions meaning getting onto flanks, especially flanks that people can't do anything about. What that means is let's say hypothetically you have a battleship that is the anchor point, and you have an enemy battleship that's also bowing to your battleship. Your job is to get onto the flank. So you can actually shoot that enemy battleship and they can't turn and point their bow at you because they'll risk getting deleted by your battleship. And that's one of the things about Siegfried. Individually playing solo, she's a tough ship to play. She really does need a division. And that's what I've noticed is that when I play solo, it's a bit of a struggle. But when I'm in a division, the ship becomes really, really capable because I can you know, get ships that can cover up my weaknesses. So the beginning part of this battle, by the way, not the most exciting to be honest, um, because a lot of it, what I'm doing here is just sort of taking pot shots at longer range. And with a lot of the islands there, you'll see that at times I'm not really getting the shots uh, that I want. Anyways, it will get better as I eventually move into better and better positions and you'll sort of see how and why I decide to move into certain places. By the way, one sort of side note, which I should have talked about way earlier, but I sort of forgot to, um, is that if you do actually happen to hear things in the background, like, you know, kids crying or the occasional screaming sound, and I miss it during the sort of the post edit or whatever, um, I do apologize for that ahead of time. I just moved into a new apartment and, you know, I actually moved from Toronto to Halifax uh, very, very recently. And in my apartment, on both sides of my apartment are two young families with kids. <laughs> So yeah, if I upload videos also at like the really weirdest times at night, I apologize for that as well. But I will try my best to make sure that there's no sort of background distractions and things like that. All right, so you'll notice that I'm still sort of further back, right? And that's kind of Siegfried's positioning as well. Like you don't want to be charging out in the front. And the big reason you don't want to charge out in the front is because remember the vulnerability? Battleship looks at you the wrong way and you're their primary target. You can get citadel on the way in, and you can get citadel in the butt on the way out. And so that makes her kind of a ship that, you know, you really need to be either on a flank where people can't deal with you right away, or you've just kind of got to sit back a little bit and try to do your best to support. Again, your primary targets are cruisers. Yes, I know that at times that they're not the easiest things to, you know, find, to engage, but really you're looking for the cruiser shots. Now I do see this buffalo. This buffalo is in a really, really bad position because I can actually get shots in onto this buffalo side. And my salvo is just, just a touch on the high side. I get 
three overpens, one penetration. So out of the six shells I fired, I actually managed to hit four of them. Good percentage hit, but didn't get into the Citadel. Aim matters with Siegfried, and this is a ship that if you just screw up on your aim a little bit, you will be punished for it. And I will try again. This one is me not aiming well. And you can sort of see the results. Yeah, there it is. Not aim that well. Didn't really shoot where I want to. And that's kind of the thing. You've only got six guns, right? Like, you've really got to make the shots count. But you'll see later on where the dispersion really helps. It's like, you know, I paid for my early game crappy RNG and I got it back in the late game. So thank goodness for that. All right. Buffalo manages to get back into cover on the island. So I could only really shoot at this Oh, this guy. <laughs> I don't know, he just kind of went forward reversed, and so, you know, he was a target. Not really the best target, and a lot of that also has to do with the fact that the 380s, when dealing with the higher tier battleships, unless they're really, like, sort of closer, and they're giving you broadsides at longer distances, 380s do lack a bit of penetration. Which means that if they're somewhat angled, and they're getting some of that uh, bonus to the thickness of their armor through that little bit of angling, even without auto bounce, sometimes your shells will just shatter. That cruiser is tempting fate. <laughs> like, come on. You're gonna pay for it this time, I swear to god. Dispersion! Oh, not bad. Not bad. Yeah, there you go. Okay, uh, the damage. Yeah. Okay, 15k, not the worst, but I mean, now he's gonna learn his lesson and get out of there, so, alright. Won't be shooting at him again. Because I don't think he's gonna stick around for that. No. Oh, uh, the battleship took a shot, didn't really get the shots to connect either, and that battleship is going to burn to death here. Alright, 14 kilometers from that guy, take another shot at him. Again, only remaining target for me, so see what happens here. Okay, our other battleship is dead, and two penetrations. So with battleships at longer range, you're mostly going to be aiming sort of um, upper belt armor, really. Uh, not the main belt, but like above that, where the casement armor will be up for some ships. You're going to be aiming there, because if you shoot there, you're still going to get some penetrations. Okay, come on. Come on. Cruiser's coming out, there you go. I'm going to see if I can get a shot here. Alright, so right now, I'm looking at the map, and things aren't exactly looking so hot. Not really able to secure any caps right now. We're a little bit down on points as well. They've got the center cap, and they've got these two big battleships in front of me, which is not the most fun to deal with, especially that uh, Musashi over there. Our team has a destroyer, okay. Our Kitakaze, come on. Start destroying that guy. Uh, never mind. Okay, um, crap, there's a destroyer there. I've got to move, can't really stay here. One, that Musashi in front of me, that might hurt if he actually hits me hard enough, and two, Destroyer on my side means most likely that torpedoes are coming. This Musashi is also giving me a bit of a broadside. I'm not really sure why. There you go, I do connect there, see that? So at closer distances, around sort of sub 10 kilometers, you should take those shots against battleships if they're giving you side. You're gonna be able to get those citadels in pretty reliably too. But longer distances, like I said, penetration does kind of go off. Ah, on the other hand, cruisers! <laughs> No, 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 no. Really bad idea when you're a cruiser and you run into Siegfried because Siegfried just does that to you. Unless you're an American heavy cruiser with a 27 mil bow, then you can go ahead and do that. But if you're anything else when you don't have that, don't try. Siegfried's dispersion at close range is lethal. And like I said, right, early game, not the world's best dispersion. As the game gets later and later on, my dispersion just, I get better luck, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. Um, Alright, so take a look at the current situation. Now you see where my Iowa is positioned on the map, and you see where I'm positioned, right? This is the kind of thing you generally want for Siegfried, is to be on the flanks with an anchoring battleship. It is a lot easier to accomplish this if you have division mates, a lot harder to do when you're just playing in randoms. And this is why I think Siegfried is kind of one of those ships where if you see them in the correct kind of division, really, really strong ship. When you're solo, it more or less depends and it's going to be more that do you have the right kind of situation that your team puts you in for you to succeed i've had really poor games in siegfried when playing solo where just nothing i did was any use right i would go for the flank and then look back and battleships are gone they've turned tail and it just 
disappear. And when Siegfried doesn't get that kind of support, she is going to suffer a little bit more. Now, when you're dealing with that Bowen battleship that's just countering you, your options are limited. You can HE them, uh, you do have penetration, but just not the world's best damage. And so, yeah, you might as well chip away and then try to reposition, so run away, reposition. Do those kinds of things. One other thing to point out, Siegfried is not a ship that you want to be playing with, let's say, like double rudder configurations. She's pretty agile as it is with only one rudder mod, but concealment really is key for her. Why? Because you need to get into those positions. Getting into the right positions where people aren't seeing you allows you to get off those shots that allow you to be effective. I'm gonna screw this shot up because I didn't lead enough. And yeah, blech. I have a couple of really poor shots in this game. I'm just looking back, it's like, oh my god, I can't believe I aimed there. <laughs> but at the time, you know, in middle battle. All right, anyways. Pushing up, that Sovietsky goes down, which is good. So now this Musashi and this Iowa are in a battle against each other. Technically speaking, Iowa is going to lose this because Musashi is going to wreck him. So right now, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to rush out to support, right? I'm trying to get in there so I can offer some kind of assistance. In this case, really, I'm just trying to provide some kind of pressure on this Musashi, preventing the Musashi from being able to turn away and kite the Iowa. Because once the Musashi is able to sort of turn and kite, then the Iowa is going to really struggle. So get into this position, fire some shots, pressure this Musashi to keep going this way. And if the Iowa can hold the Musashi's attention for long enough, I might be able to get in there and get those torpedoes off. Generally speaking, torpedoes for this ship is like super situational. And you really do want to get so close that you can't miss. You're not going to really use those 8km torps pretty much ever. Um, and so that that's why I said earlier that the nerf to the torpedo range, yeah, it doesn't really matter. But the heal, well, that's the issue, right? Like, in this particular game, I didn't take any devastating citadels through the bow. But I've had games where I've eaten the bow citadel, like, really early on. Bam, 40k off, and it's like, holy crap, right? Really do need that heal. But I guess Wargaming have looked at their stats again, their spreadsheets, and... You know, and still, I guess the ship is overperforming a bit, so they've opted for removing a heal charge. I am, personally, I'm okay with it. You'll typically see me in a lot of games with Siegfried that I only use maybe two or three charges anyways, mostly because I do want to maximize my AR. She does have battleship guns, and her reload is a little bit on the slow side, so getting some AR, helpful. Enemy destroyer pops up, and I'm gonna shoot him first. <laughs> I don't like destroyers. Always have this thing about shooting DDs. All right, Musashi, as you can tell, now, really having to deal with one of us, still, in his mind, I was the bigger threat to keep engaging the Iowa. Me, on the other hand, though, with my dispersion, I can hit those nice little spots on occasion. Here we go, salvo out. There we go, I think this one's gonna be good. Yep, there we go. There's the rear hexagonal citadel piece. You know, through the rear cheek, essentially. There it goes, citadel one. Okay, Iowa goes down. It's just me right now versus Musashi versus uh, North Carolina. North Carolina is still pretty full, so in my mind, I'm like, I gotta take care of this Musashi, and then I'm gonna have to go and maybe torp that NC, because we're also running out of time, and if you've noticed the cap in the points, we're in trouble. Yeah. Whatever I do in the next, like, minute and a half has got to count. Every single thing has got to count. And this is where Siegfried can occasionally pull out these miracle shots. Watch this, because I'm going to sit it out the Musashi directly through the part in the stern where he's flat. Watch this. Look at that dispersion. Bam! There's the double citadel. Gone. Okay. Now, remember the earlier thing I was talking about the armor, right? Here's what you're going to do. Generally speaking with Siegfried, when you run into battleships that can overmatch that bow and hit that really thin forward 100mm citadel plate, what you want to do is actually kind of offer them more the side. So this NC, I, I don't know, maybe it's just the NC is confidence that he's going to be able to kill me before I can kill him. I, I don't know, but this is where you'll see it. When the NC fires, you'll see me actually turn and give him more of the side, because I actually want him to shoot on my thicker side. Yeah, and you'll notice that by doing so, I'm actually kind of mitigating the damage. And come on, getting all the guns, because I want every salvo to count now, right? If he gets into the good position for me to get the citadel, I want the citadel now. So there we go, salvo out. Only six guns, right? So I can only output so much damage. There you go, another double citadel, 32,000 off. And that's a really key salvo, because now, now it's basically a one citadel game, right? And I've got the HP advantage. So I can either rush him, or if he screws up again, I'm gonna get him. And you'll see, once again, the shell's coming, and you'll see me sort of turn out. Oh, okay, unfortunately. Yeah, you'll see it. You see how I'm like more turned out? Okay, there we go, another salvo. 
And there we go. And this is the kill shot coming here. Look at the time. Look at the caps. Look at the points. Holy crap, right? <laughs> and there you go. There is the other Citadel. And that is a kill number four. So there you go. That's sort of the good, the bad, and the ugly with the Siegfried. Uh, this particular game was an 11 Citadel game for 213,000 damage. And really so last minute. Uh, really last minute kind of carry there. <laughs> Had the NC just decided to run, we lost this game. Base experience was good, um, two, I think just over 2,000, so that's good for four kills. Pretty good game overall. I mean, take a look at the additional detailed information. Yeah, most of the damage done by armor piercing. <laughs> a little bit with secondaries, not much though, and really no use for torpedoes. Credit earned, 502,000 with a premium account. Non-premium would have been 278,000. So credit earning, kind of meh. Still, overall opinions about the ship, I like her. I think she's got her own unique sort of niche in the game. Uh, you know, something that is different from what we already have in terms of Alaska and Kronstadt and Azuma and Yoshino, right? And Stalingrad, she's kind of different. She's very comfortable overall to play. Good gunnery, you know, speed is good. Concealment's not bad. Anti-air is pretty good. You can, of course, trade in the defensive fire for Hydro. Armor is good in some places, although that weak bow, weak stern, that can lead to issues for some players. All in all, I actually think she's pretty well balanced. Maybe a few tweaks here and there, and she's ready to go. Anyways, folks, I hope you enjoyed this work in progress seek free video. Tune in again tomorrow as I talk about Italian cruisers. Until then, have yourselves a good one, and I'll talk to all of you again tomorrow.